What is good, Cardano fam, Ada gang? We have lots of exciting updates to unpack today and some interesting new analytics from Google Trends. So hit that subscribe, hit that like. How long is staking locked? Is it zero days? Zero days, zero days or zero days? Yes, all of the above, they're all correct. So the next time you see a troll, send them this nice poll. Speaking of nice polls, Altcoin Daily says, let's settle this once and for all. Cardano or Solana? And just recently, it tipped over in favor of Cardano. There's less than nine hours left. And at the end of the day, whatever is going on with Solana, we know that Cardano has network effect. Charles Hoskinson recently uh, talked about Bing as an example. If you remember like a decade ago, how much money Bing spent to try to speedrun network effect. You can't speedrun network effect. Cardano has a bustling community and that's backed by metrics like Google Trends, Google Analytics, search queries that we see. And at the end of the day, there is a strong presence with the community. So my question then is like, where are these, and I'm grossly generalizing here, right? 100 million, 10 million, 5 million daily active users. Like, are they on MySpace or something? What am I missing here? Because at the end of the day, does Google Trends disagree? Does X disagree? Does YouTube disagree? Does Google search disagree? You can always inflate numbers. And it kind of reminds me of back in the day with um, the importance of Beatport. There were labels, as a producer myself, there were labels that would kind of brag about beat, uh, botting their way to the top 10. So it's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun in terms of number manipulation. And I'm not trying to point the finger, but at the end of the day, the takeaway is that Cardano has a very strong, active community on many different social media platforms. We're thrilled to announce Charles Hoskinson, CEO of IOG, as a keynote speaker at Tech Forum Argentina. Charles is a key figure in the blockchain technology space, best known for being the co-founder of Ethereum and the founder of Cardano. And this is great to see, guys. October 19th, 2024, a little bit more than a month from now. And we saw an earlier post today. The original post is deleted for whatever reason but this was shared by Stake with Pride. Everything is always linked for you guys below, the polls and all. And it's so exciting to see that Charles will be uh, attending, but also having some presence and speaking with the president of Argentina. So more presence, more paving the way in Latin America and the rest of the world. It's gonna be interesting to see if there's gonna be any unique announcements and see what they're cooking up. A lot of people are speculating. Let me know what you guys think is cooking up with Cardano and Argentina. This week in Emergo, of course, we saw that exciting VC firm Antler. Uh, Emergo announced a tr strategic partnership with Antler and its Ibex innovation platform. If you guys don't know, Ibex has tons of partnerships, massive portfolio, Antler as a whole. Ibex is their extension arm. A few of their existing partners include Google, IBM, Microsoft for Startups, HSBC, big names, one of the earliest uh, investment firms. So it's great to see that we don't need 200 million ADA by amateurs, no offense, but if you're gonna ask for 200 million ADA through UTXO, then please at least spend $9.99 on your marketing, you know, on your social media platforms. Uh, it's great to see that we don't need that massive am amount to at least get the ball rolling, the wheel rolling with VC firms. And as we saw Sheldon say, like if you're building in the Cardano ecosystem, and you need some sort of incubation support, don't hesitate to reach out to Emergo, Sheldon in particular, uh, to kind of get that rolling. Uh, of course, we also saw Yoroi Wallet introducing new Cardano governance tools. And finally, you can join Emergo in Singapore on September 18th to 19th for token 2049. Good stuff. The average order size of a Cardano swap the last seven days, 546 ADA. And speaking of swaps, pump friend another pump.fun alternative on Cardano, a quick launch update for the friends. They will have to push back the launch by 24 hours, which will mean they'll go live this Sunday, September 15th, 4 p.m. UTC. And I like that they wanna ensure a great user experience. We see that Cardano continues to lead the way, uh, be very competitive with good UX, good human-centered design. And I think that's key to deliver elegant, modern, well-designed apps that generate positive emotions. That's very important. Stuart Alderotti, Ripple's chief legal officer, giving another update about Ripple, but also how that affects us, I'll explain. Ripple's case is over, but the fair notice defense is still alive for others. The SEC cites the 2017 Dow report as industry notice 
that quote unquote crypto asset securities are subject to US securities laws. Seven years later, the SEC apologizes to a federal judge. Surely a person of at, uh, at least ordinary intelligence, he says, for the confusion it invited by using the inherently unclear term. So it's over for Ripple. And this is good for us. Why? Well, we joined them as final founding members in the DREC Alliance alongside many others for the sake of Ripple. It was Ripple and XRPL Labs, the guys behind Zum Wallet, formerly known as Zum Wallet, now called Zaman Wallet, many other proposals and apps that they're building. So we're like this with Ripple. We're close. Charles Hoskinson has spoke highly of XRP and of David Schwartz and what they're doing. Uh, in addition, we know that XRP is not a security. Brad Garlinghouse has vocally said that he anticipates a Cardano ETF, and they paid a 94% reduction in their penalty. So we have a great relation with Ripple. They're going with compliance first. We're going with compliance first, decentralization. We see that Binance is also changing how they were kind of going fast. Now they're going slow and with compliance first. So this is great for us. Good news for Ripple is good news for DeFi. Good news for DeFi is good news for us. We have a competitive advantage since we have a good alliance with Ripple. So I would love to see us nurturing more of the relationship between XRP and ADA. Why not? I like the both projects very much. So let's take a look at Google Trends before we comment on price and timing. So here now we're looking at YouTube searches from the new year, January 1st, 2024 to today. And we are looking at Cardano, Dogecoin, a couple of new ones added, Monero, Caspa, now, of course, people sometimes search tickers, but sometimes the name is the ticker. And here we can see already that Caspa, no offense to the other projects. I really like Monero. I like Dogecoin. I have Monero, uh, I have Dogecoin. Uh, I mined a lot of Monero in the past. Um, I really liked kind of what they were doing with the CPU mining and the privacy and whatnot. Still do. Uh, still really enjoy that project for what they support for privacy. But we can see that we're going neck and neck with Dogecoin. So this comes back to what? The strength of the community. We can see the number just trickled up higher. The community is strong and these off-chain analytics speak of a deeper story that you will not get when you go on a space and it's just a guy yapping for seven hours because he can't handle that the price is down because he doesn't run, he doesn't lift weights, he doesn't do push-ups, he doesn't do cold immersion, he just sucks ass. When we look at the other stuff, Monero, almost 4x, almost four times the amount of search results by people worldwide and a little bit more than double Caspa. So this again shows us that people are searching. What does that translate to to price? It means that they search on Web2, but they haven't been buying yet. They're kind of waiting for the price to rally because when the price rallies and that can happen fast, as we saw in the previous cycle, one month can sometimes give multiple Xs. Uh, we're talking like in one month, we can go like two, three, four, five X because rallies are fast. So those people that are searching are still on the fence. And oddly enough, it sounds ironic, but when the price rallies up, that legitimizes the project in their mind. So people are searching. The apps and the ecosystem is bustling. The community is strong. We have built network effect. And when other projects fail, when other projects have like whatever, catastrophic failure, whatever have you, that actually adds to our narrative because at the end of the day, our narrative is Bitcoin 2.0. It is the safe and secure network. We've heard people say that time and time again. So I think that the timing for us guys is gonna be the colder months. Uh, let's remember that the end of August, we were hitting like three bucks pretty much with just Sunday swap around the corner. Um, during that time, we had our own FUD. We had the one transaction per block. People are always gonna find new ways to FUD. And I was speaking to a few people in the Cardano ecosystem of that, like, I don't think we've seen the worst of the FUD yet. So brace yourselves with FUD. That can translate to some new buying opportunities because at the end of the day, there needs to be maximum FUD before we send it. It's just a market psychology at the end of the day. I think that the key times is going to be in the colder months. And I think part of that is holiday season, retail, timing is everything. So I don't think we're going to see mega pumps or the beginning of mega pumps until like January, February and beyond. But let me know what you guys think. Price point wise, can we hit three bucks? Absolutely. Can we exceed to five, seven dollars? I think that's reasonable. I think where we have to be careful is when we start doing like, oh, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks. It's possible. But I like to go with probable instead of possible. Just so that way, if it does send it, you know, at least our expectations were lower instead of having crazy expectations at the end of the day. But let me know what you guys think. What's your price prediction? 
And what do you guys think about these trends that we see that people are searching and it's active and there are a lot of search queries at the end of the day. So I like to show us the facts. Google Trends is facts. Networked effect is facts. So just be very careful and aware and vigilant when you hear negative Nancy's just throwing opinions. Because I put a tweet out at the end of the day that like, being really, really bearish is kind of easy. You don't have to give a reason for your thesis. You don't have to look at objective data. And you can just sit there and we know that a broken clock is right twice a day. We know that if I sit here in the middle of June and I say it's gonna snow, eventually it will. Eventually it'll turn December, January and it will snow. I'll be like, haha, I was right. But timing is key, you know what I'm saying? You don't launch a retail sale for back to school in the middle of like New Year's Eve. There's a timing for everything when it comes to marketing. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of psychology and emotions that are part of this. The cycles are the cycles and the narratives are kind of the garnish to it. Being that we have everything else to kind of support it with a strong foundation, I don't see an objective reason why we can't send it and go beyond the previous all-time high. But the FUD up until that point, guys, we have yet to see the worst of it. So let me know your thoughts. Hit that subscribe. Hit that like. I'll see you in the next Angry Crypto Show.